Number one, shoulder getting underneath the chin and past the chin, past the ball, right? Chest getting over the inside of the back foot. Weight loading in the back right heel, right? Those are all happening simultaneously together. So if Shane can feel the weight load into his heel, when his shoulder gets under his chin, when his hands get to the top, we all saw the difference in that swing right there. Let's do a couple more of these and get some longer out, huh? Yeah. Just keeping it super simple today, right? Just yeah. trying to make sure the chest stays down. The direction of your hip turn can dictate that, but. Yeah, we got the old the Shadow Ridge Club Championship this week. <laughs> do you? Which, by the way, is no joke. For those who know, Shadow Ridge Cup Championship is pretty mean. It's a field. It's a field. It's about time, though, that you go out there and get the dub yeah. in this thing. one of my main goals for you. I wanted to make sure that at the top of your swing, we understood why this happened. Yeah. Look at my chest. Right. Makes all the sense in the world, dude. Up, yeah. But what, when it stays down, see the opposite. You know, it kind of, yeah. uh, there's right and wrong for the human body. I'll just leave, leave it at that. Um, Here's what I want though, on these, on, on these. I really do want, let's, let's, put it, let's put it all into one, one big motion here, okay? So the speed of the hands and the hips, I want them to fly, okay? I want them to go. I want you to hit the gas on this one, but I really want to feel you, I want you to feel chest down longer through the golf ball as you do this, okay? Ooh. That's our goal, ladies and gentlemen. We want to make sure our boy can actually go after it harder and hit it straighter. Yeah. <laughs> right? Is that what she said? Maybe. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was good. That's awesome. That was so funny. We really, you know what's a bummer? It's a bummer we didn't have Pete out here today. Because <laughs> yeah. Pete should have had his own microphone. Yeah. His dad is one of my favorite people on the planet. One of the funniest guys you're ever going to meet. Always is worth about, you know, three to four great laughs every hour. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, dude, that's beautiful. Hey, good round. How about how about the Sweet 16 match? How about Parker Sisk and Charlie Ryder? Oh, are they playing? They yeah, play that's a good one today, dude. Yeah, Ryder's. Ryder's good. Yeah. He bom guy's bomber. But bro, you are not going to believe the new and improved. I like Parker. I haven't, seen, I haven't seen him play. I've seen the swing on the range, though. Shane, it's not Parker anymore. Yeah. This is the new Parker. He looks like a different person. He is a different person. Yeah. He's, he's, he, it's not just that. He is the bomber now. Mm, beautiful. That's a good one. Is it here? He is the bomber now. Like, he was the longest person in that field of anybody that I had seen. By, by 10 to 15 yards. Garrett Bow also bombs it. And then Dylan Vanderveer, one of our guys, they were all up there, like they are all neck and neck, you know? Um, but I'm really interested to hear because I've heard Charlie just bombs the golf ball. Oh, okay, I'll give you an example. You know hole two at La Costa? Yes. On the Legends course? Yeah. He hit, hit it to two feet with a three wood. What? Dude, <laughs> that's so far. Yeah. And on, oh my God! What's the other hole in that back nine? It's that dog leg left over like the ravine. Over the ravine, fourteen. Yeah. Yeah, he drove that to a foot. What? Yeah, I saw. I was there for that. Oh, oh, so so he just he annihilates it. Annihilates it. I'm. He can take it off too. Like he doesn't always. I don't think do that. Mm. Getting back on track in a hurry over here, huh? Yeah. The difference between the old Parker and the Parker now is Parker. Besides feeling like a beast, which I mean, when you work out, it really does give you a, a mental edge, especially as yeah. a guy. You just feel like, wow, just so much more confident, you know. Um, but as we were joking around, you know, he'd walk up on the range and I'm like, oh, you know, I look at him and I go, 
I wouldn't want to see you walk up on the range. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just, he's just a big dude now, and he's strong, and he controls the golf club. Parker's always taken a lash at it, but the lash wasn't always controlled from the top, right? And, and it, it, wasn't, it wasn't always like that right there, where it's controlled and, and yeah. still moving. But, you know, that extra muscle and all that mass that he has now, is it's just, it's just amazing to see the speed. Speed increased, but the control increased. Yeah. And that's the part right there that I thought was huge. Well, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do the same thing. Oh, yeah. I'm doing the, I'm starting the workout thing. Well, think about, like, look at your size, right, yeah. at your height. Yeah. You know, you put on 15 pounds of muscle. Do you know what that would do? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Got to call, call Cody. Just get the at-home plan. Go see him maybe once or what? We got one, or we got another trainer. You got it? Okay, good. See, I don't get that one, because that one feels good, and then it's, like, fading. <laughs> it, felt, it, felt, it felt pretty yeah, good, though? like, I've had a few of those where I'm like, oh, that's good. Oh, no, it's not. Do you find that, like, when you hit it straighter, you hit that little baby draw? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. Um, there was that period of time where I was hitting that little baby cut really well, but that fell apart. I don't know. I just I'm every time to go back, I'm trying to get the draw. Every time you hit it great, it just has that one yard draw, draw and it just, yeah. it just, it just looks so controllable. Especially with the driver. Yeah. I mean, the driver still isn't a problem. Yeah. Even when my swing goes off, well, I somehow manage to. A lot of times, you know, you guys just need to. I prefer you guys, you, you great players. I mean, just sometimes just putting the shot shape into your mind before you hit it. A yeah. lot of times the ones that get away from you are the ones where you just hit it and then you look up and see what happens. Yeah. You know, just really like put a little feeling in your mind about what it is you want to want to, want to see when you look up here. It's funny how then it draws one yard, that you know? <laughs> yeah, and that one right there. I'm telling you right now, you know, the biggest thing that is underrated, and I don't believe it's underrated by the greats, We've obviously seen the power of what breathing can do with Phil, right? Yeah. And breathing in general. Um, but the one thing is visualization. Yeah. You know, one I, I caddied for Parker in that first round. It was yeah. the only round I caddied. I only had one in me on that golf course. There was no way I was w walking that golf course again. Um, but, you know, bogey the first hole, 66 after, you know, seven under from the rest of the way. Unbelievable round. All we did was visualize our shot every single time before we yeah. pulled the trigger, you know? I just went out there and I was like, all right, buddy. So, so you know, we, just, we would just look at it and you, you look, pick a starting line, you see it move off that line to your finish line, you know, but it was more about, I was really watching Parker's eyes this week, going through the routine and just so, so keyed in to really looking, you know, spot, target, spot, target. And you could tell by the way he was looking, he was just not even just seeing it shot. You can tell he felt that thing before he even stepped in there, right? Yeah. A big mistake that many make on the driving range is we hit and we let the swing then determine our ball flight. Meaning like, yeah. well, let's, let's just hit it and look up and, oh, that's what I'm doing? O okay, let's do that. No, like, like, put it in your mind what it is you want to feel and what you want to look up and see. Right. And it's amazing how that will really help the, help the cause, especially with you better players. It just helps yeah. the athleticism take over a little bit and your body works it more. Yeah, you know, since we just talked about picking a shot in the last two shots, they were exact, you know, absolutely perfect. Do you know that, do you know that Christian Banky kid? Dude, did you see that? 64, 63, broke the course record, then broke the next course record. The most unbelievable two rounds I've ever so seen. So I played with him at the Southwest. Yeah. 63 the first round. Dude, go low, huh? Okay, so I saw it on that one as to why you would hit that little bit push to the right. All that was was your hands were still going up and you were already turning through the golf ball. What you did so well in the beginning of the session was you were very patient at the top. We went okay. slow. Went so what happened? Harder. Everything stopped and then, it went. and then everything went back down. Okay. Get the same feeling in your backswing. Make sure you hit that point of completion. Now here's the thing. For the viewer, we have a couple checkpoints for our players as far as how to complete the swing. Come on over here on the front, Gabe, and we'll, we'll kind of direct them through it. Number one, shoulder getting underneath the chin and past the chin, past the ball, right? Chest getting over the inside of the back foot. Weight loading in the back right heel, right? Those are all happening simultaneously together. So if Shane can feel the weight load into his heel, when his shoulder gets under his chin, when his hands get to the top. We all saw the difference in that swing right there. A lot better swing, still a little bit out right, yeah. but that would help 
you know, that would be a lot easier if you just kept the chest down through the golf ball a little bit more, okay. a little bit more of the knockdown feeling, okay? okay? The one thing that all your right shots have, they come in real shallow. shallow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So just give me a little, like, watch this. If we just put this golf ball right here, three club heads behind the ball, just on the inside right here. This will help you stay on top of it a little bit. Ta-da! By the way, great drill for you. Yeah, just I've been doing that. You have been doing that? Okay, yeah. good, 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 good. This is a this is you know one of my guys that you know we we've been working for for a while and what's so cool is like during the quarantine last year he'd, he'd go out in the back I mean dude how how creative did we have to get yeah. we're just trying to maintain a golf game you know just yeah. just just trying to find something where someone to put the phone just trying to you yeah. know order a net when at a time when nets were just flying Fly off the off shelves the yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to find a little mat to hit off of. Going in the back, using the putting green that had all the root system in it. Dude, <laughs> <from the> <laughs> yeah, for those of you trying to build a putting green at your house, don't don't, put a tree next to don't do it next to trees that have been like staples, a part of like the backyard of your house and something that you can't take out because that root system underneath just really starts to build up and man. Like a volcano hole. Like a boomer's <laughs> volcano hole. Yeah, boomer's volcano hole. Literally. Yeah, like he'd be hitting putts and all of a sudden the ball would take a U-turn and like go back over there and you're like, <laughs> it's, it's falling off tree roots. All right, so here we go. We have patience to the top. Here's that draw coming in here. You know what I love? You can, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you, what you, you can try to hit that draw with that ball there, and you know what's funny? It just goes dead straight because it doesn't, it doesn't let you get underneath. You yeah. know what I mean? And I just put it around the heel side. Yeah, there you go. There it is. There it is, right there. Beautiful. I think it's key though, like absolutely key to have those triggers as we talked about that lock you in at the top of the swing, right? There's a feeling that I feel at the top of the swing when I get up there where that weight loads the shoulders in a yeah. spurt and spot relative to my shoulder, relative to my chin. And you know what it's like? <laughs> right? That's kind of, yeah. Yeah, I want to make sure you have that dialed in. If you have that and keeping the chest down, we're golden. Hit, hit this one lower for me, okay? Okay. I can just try to punch it a little bit more. Same back swing, but just a little more punch to it. always straightens up the flight. Yeah. If I don't, you know, if I don't get on, in the same way, if I don't get on top of it, you know, like right here, it just, and you kind of stay back, you know, it just, it can sweep through there and just, you know, a little right, little yeah. left, little right, little left, and it's just not quite tight. Remember, get on top of that thing and that controls that club face, also controls that path. Start this one a little lower. It's thin, but it's down the line. Yeah. Um, you know, and all that does too is keeps the chest down longer. Yeah. You know, it's something simple that can make a huge difference. I, I really do believe, like you know, because you've been close. You know, I know, I know, I know. Um, we're waiting for the, you know, for you to get back in your mojo. Yeah. But I think the biggest thing that's going to eliminate the big miss or the misses in general, it's going to really tighten the window. Yeah. Keeping the chest down. Yeah. If you have three parts of your session today and you keep it super simple, right? Identifying a complete turn. Making sure that. In transition, if we're being a little bit technical, it's pushing from the inside of your right foot right. to open up as that would be the technically correct way to keep the right. chest down. More from in here, in here, that way, right? That keeps the butt back up against the chair or whatever, yeah. you know? Um, but really, when you're playing, just trying to flight it down and trying to keep your chest down is really what it boils down to. It's yeah. the key. Complete it chest down longer divot right yeah longer divot keep the club in the ground longer find a lot of similarities to what we used to tell Bo you know keep the club in the ground longer he used to call it div theory <laughs> keep the club in the ground longer
That was close, huh? Yeah. Just a little more. A little more what? A little leg. I feel like it's getting up a little bit still at times. A good feeling is that the right knee just drives into the back of the left knee, right. not moving towards me. That was ridiculously good right there. Yeah. And that's a good, good, you know, there's, we, this is why we have hour sessions and not 15 minute sessions, right? Is because though we can know the plan from the get go, oftentimes we talk through what the ideal feeling is for the player. A Tom Watson thought was the right knee driving into the back of the left knee. See what that does to the footwork? And see what it does to this yeah. right hip? And we saw Louis Oosthuizen on the range at Torrey with that little board up against his right hip. Why? To keep his right hip back as he rotated. It's all the same stuff. It's just right. a matter of what works for you. you know, but that's, that's something right there, that right knee working more this way right. than working that way. It's always hey, poor, a key. Poor Louis. Man, he gets second a lot in those majors, uh, huh? Yeah. I, I just, I don't Him, know, Lee Westwood, and Phil. I don't know Phil. how you go in the hazard on 17 with all that room to the right. Oh, yeah, no doubt. It's brutal. How about Rom just making two 25-footers, though, to win the tournament like that in that, in that yeah. situation? On Torrey Pines Greens, by the way. Which, yeah. when you're a local boy, you, you know what that means. That's not easy. It's not like they're the smoothest, like, you know, yeah, it's just they're, move, they're moving. Beautiful, Shane. Hey, you got a good feel what we need to accomplish today? Okay, you're welcome to stay around and get some shots in. And so over at Shadow Ridge, get ready for the big, get ready for one of the toughest club championships in golf. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, it's a good spot. So, hey, um, work those three things. You know, just like I said, what's nice is a lot of this is, can be done at home. Yeah. You just getting the weight back into that right heel and identifying the top position. And then when you come out to the range, slow reps like you started, hit some more knockdown shots, hit some lower shots, start them underneath the, underneath the you know, like a, the first floor in front of you here. If you had a building, try to hit them through the first floor windows, not, yeah. the, not the fourth floor. Yeah. Um, and that'll keep your chest down longer, keep the club in the ground longer, okay? Yeah. But we did come up with something at the end there. Right knee working into the back of the left knee. A very simple thought for not having the right hip move closer to the ball, okay? Perfect. All right, buddy. Love you, man. Thanks, Adam. Um, Thanks, buddy. Thank you guys so much for watching our video. Any questions or comments you have, please leave them below. Also, click the link below to pick up three free videos. We appreciate you guys. Enjoy our channel.